What's up, everyone? We are live at five. It's Friday, April 17th. I put on a blazer. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. I put on a cardigan. <laughs> and we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hi, I put on earrings, if we're all yes, saying And your, 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 your earrings are becoming sort of a thing. Um, yeah. yeah. I kind of believe I like them. It's becoming a home edition thing. Um, <laughs> hey, Beth, who is our guest today? One of our favorite Broadway performers. The ultra lovable Rob McClure star, yes. Broadway's Mrs. Doubtfire. I know, I'm dying to see Mrs. Doubtfire. Maybe he'll perform the whole show for us today. Yeah. Like a really fast one man version. He could do it. If anyone can do it, it's Rob McClure. Uh, we will get to him, but first let's talk about today's news. Caitlin, are you there? Caitlin, uh, <laughs> Beth, what's the first story? Well, <laughs> this one actually really kind of hit me hard. The public theater has canceled Shakespeare in the Park for the summer. Mm. And they've also uh, called off the rest of their season and all the events at Joe's Pub and down at the public theater. So we will not get a chance to see the, the remounting of As You Like It or Richard II. And that's at the New York institution, you know, Paul? That's a real New York thing. But like the next year, next year. We we're not getting all the things that we, you know, it'll be back. Yeah, the Delacorte will be dark this summer. The Park will be back. Yeah. Yeah, and we found out what's going to be happening. Nope. nope. <laughs> we have some tech issues today with Caitlin. So New York Theater Workshop uh, announced that their season is done. Uh, they were in the midst of uh, Sanctuary City, which was um, by Pulitzer Prize winner Martina Majok. And it was in previews um, at the time of the shutdown. I was hearing fantastic things about it. And so they've announced officially that the season is done. And of course, the big event and the reason why this photo, that's this photo, indicates that, of course, is Greta Gerwig and Oscar Isaac. And they were all set to do um, Three Sisters with director Sam Gold. And that was supposed to start in May. We'll find out more about that later. Future production details will be announced at a later date. Um, and that's it. We'll, we'll get more in New York Theater Workshop soon, I hope. Let's try again, Caitlin. Yes, we're gonna try again. And we are celebrating Town in a new way tonight. That's right, this is an event tonight at 6.30. Reeve Carney and Eva Noblezada and Anais Mitchell, Tony winner Anais Mitchell, are celebrating the one year anniversary of Town. They opened a year ago, last year, yeah. last year. So they're doing a live stream, a living room live stream uh, on the Hades Town Facebook and Instagram page, the Hades book and the Hades gram. So there you can celebrate Hades Town. And, uh, you know, first of all, Reeve and Eva are so lovely and they're quarantining together. Reva, we call them. We do. So they're going to sing. I, we should compile all of our famous couple, couple names. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Dina just never had much of a good ring to it. No, not it wasn't like Reba. It was Tara. <laughs> yeah, and Broadway may be dark, but it's still going green. Yes, so uh, the Broadway Green Alliance uh, is a very big thing, and, and they're having Earth Day initiatives. Earth Day is when exactly? April 22nd. April 22nd. April 22nd. Um, and so what they're doing is they're having the Earth Day Initiative and March for Science NYC for their Earth Day 50 virtual kickoff. So it's vir Earth Day is going virtual, which, I mean, it's fine. On April 19th, 3.30 to 10.30, members of the Broadway community will join this special live stream and sing songs and messages of activism. There's a lot of activists in the Broadway community, and, you know, because we're, we're, we're a very woke community, the Broadway community. But then, um, so what's the news about James Snyder? He's going to be part of it. He's Harry Potter. Well, James Snyder, but also our guest today, Rob McClure, will be part of it. Oh. And Sierra Renee from Frozen and the whole company of Jagged Little Pill. Then there will be some extra things with, uh, you know, Andrew Barth Feldman and Sydney Lucas and a bunch of kids as well. So there's a bunch of events. Oh, that's happening. more than I do. Now, also I at the virtual event, um, Senator Elizabeth Warren will be there and Bill Nye, mm -hmm. the science guy. You like him. Caitlin's <laughs> excited. I see her. Bill Nye. 
I love him. And guys, don't forget to set your alarms for this weekend. There's a big, exciting thing happening. Yes, a big, exciting live thing, it's Michael. You're an alarm. It's not at eight a.m. It's eight p.m. I think we'll be we'll be up. But reminder. Well, we're napping all the time now, so who knows? But Michael Yuri is going to reprise his performance in Jonathan Tolan's Fire and Cellar right here on Broadway.com for a good cause. Right, eight o'clock on Sunday night. Sunday night. I've got. I've been working with Michael, and um, it's going to be fantastic. You guys have to. How really is the living room? Is it yeah. nice? It's, okay, that's all. Great. I mean, it's like a set now, but yeah, but it's <laughs> his living room. Um, it's it's going to be really really fun. It's a really fun show. For any, those of you who don't know, Barbara Streisand released this book about her home, and she announced that she had a shopping center. I don't remember how she said it at a mall. I don't know how she said it under the home. So Jonathan Tolan's a playwright came up with this idea that an unemployed LA actor is working there, and it's all about that. And it's all fictitious. It's, fictitious, yes. Really a lot of fun and extremely extremely funny. Uh, yeah. So that's today's news. Beth, I'm going to slide you out. I know you'll be watching because you're around of with me. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Yes. Guys, today we got Rob McClure here with us as our final guest of the week on Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. Most recently, he was seen on Broadway bringing to life the titular role of Mrs. Doubtfire. His other Broadway credits include Beetlejuice, Something Rotten, Avenue Q. He earned a Tony nom for his leading role in Chaplin. He's done a whole bunch of stuff. We're so glad he's here today. You guys can follow him on social at McClure Rob with a uh, two R's and leave all of your questions down in the comments below and please welcome Rob and Paul. Rob McClure. Hi friends. I put on a blazer too, Paul. You know what? I This is the first blazer I've worn maybe definitely this week, but like, and fun fact, I, I showered and shaved 45 minutes ago. That's amazing. <laughs> and, and, I, and I said, I'm going to throw a jacket on. I felt very clean and fresh and I love that you did because I, listen, I, I got to take the opportunities when they come, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The last, time, the last time I put on anything uh, nice was for our Zoom run-through of Mrs. Doubtfire on April 5th, which would have been our opening night. Oh. Now, have there been ongoing events with the cast? or I know you guys did that amazing video. Yeah, that was super fun. Yeah, that was the, the writer's idea. They, they just wanted to do something uh, – to bring us together, and that that was really lovely. Um, and uh, we are we we have a text chain, so we check in with each other often. Uh, and we're, I think we're gonna do like an every two three weeks thing where we check in and maybe run some sequences and lines just to ha make sure they're still in there. Not that we're yeah. not gonna, you know, when we come back, um, there's gonna be a rehearsal. It's not like it's gonna be like tonight. We. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you know, we'll go back into rehearsal. It, it probably won't be extensive rehearsal, um, but we'll go back into rehearsal and then back into preview. So, uh, but I can't wait. Um, I can't wait to get back to it. So how many previews in were you when Broadway? Three. Three. Yeah. We did our first preview March 9th. We did 9th, 10th, and 11th. And on Thursday afternoon, March 12th, uh, we were in rehearsal implementing changes that were going to go in that night. And uh, they came in and sat yeah. everybody down and, and told us um, it was weird leaving, you know, Kevin McCollum, our producers, um, so lovely and saying like, we will come back here. We will come back here, leave everything, leave your stuff in your dressing rooms, leave, leave your, so it's weird to think about our costumes and sets and props just sitting in the empty Sondheim waiting, you know, Mrs. Dalfire's yeah. face on a bust in my dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> waiting for Broadway to reopen. Were you, um, how, how was it going? I mean, like you did the shot of town. Yeah. Back into rehearsal, uh, and you did it out of town when last the end of last year, right? Yeah, okay. over the holidays in Seattle. Yeah, right. Okay, so you didn't have that much. You didn't have that long of a break, really, and then no. you jumped back in with some revisions, right? Yeah. yeah. So were you, were you feeling good at the Sondheim? Yeah. Yeah. It was it was the worst possible timing. You know, it's like yeah. momentum. The show felt great. The audiences were cheering and tearful. It was like the best we could hope for. Yeah. Um, stage door was madness. So exciting. Um, and then, uh, and then the rug was pulled out from under it, but at the same time, you know, we, everyone could sort of see the writing on the wall and, and we're going like, you know, there was concern about, do we stage door? Do we not stage door? Are there people? Should we wash our hands? Do we, how do we handle this? And, uh, the second that those conversations started being had, it was like, should we really be 
doing this anymore. So when the announcement came, everyone knew it was the right thing to do. Um, it was just hard, uh, devastating for you know people all over. We're we're lucky in that we're gonna come back. But yeah. the um, you know I think about these kids at their high school, yeah, who just didn't get to do the thing that they built, and it breaks my heart. I think about my life like. If I didn't get to do my senior year musical, yeah, the chain of events that that caused for the rest of my life is scary to think about, you know. Wow. Um, and yeah. I just I I hope that people find a way to lift these kids up and and get their work out there so that they can have the opportunities that it would have provided them. And also, uh, all your friends over at Beetlejuice, they 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 don't get to go back because you I were. Know. In the I know. I'm, still, I'm still crossing my fingers that they um that they find another theater and come yeah. back. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, having a last night at the winter garden and not knowing it was your last night is a cruel trick, you know? Mm, yeah. That, but that, I, uh, yeah. But I love them so much. And I, I, uh, I'm rooting for them to come back because it, yeah. it's, it's too good. And there are too many fans loving it for it to just go away. Yeah. So I have a question when you're playing Daniel Hillard and Mrs. Doubtfire, who of course, um, disguises himself as Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah for a good cause to see to see his kids yeah um you, mrs dotfire wears a fat suit yeah so does a that body, a body suit she's a beautiful woman a what a body suit she's beautiful body suit sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. okay beautiful body of course a body suit i'm sorry you're right that what, no, what a, a horrible thing for me no please Especially someone who struggles with my own weight. You're horrible oh, thing to say. We all do. Well, we all do now in this quarantine. Well, that, this, well this is leading to my question. <laughs> you're wearing a bodysuit of a larger size than your own. How much larger can your body get underneath it? Because <laughs> I'm wondering, can you, does it matter? Because you're, <sighs> does it matter? I mean, can you, do you oh, have pressure on like, <laughs> like Satine and Moulin Rouge or like, you know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> don't think it hasn't crossed my mind. Don't think it hasn't crossed my mind. It's you know, it's so crazy. It's like um, you know, it it takes extra effort, doesn't it? And then and when you're just sitting at home watching Tiger King to not reach for a bag of pretzels, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I I I'm also uh, confident that once we get a date, we can all get our acts back together. <laughs> yeah, I like our our body suits uh, fitted tightly to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you don't want them to have to rebuild that whole thing. Oh my gosh! Well, and there are there are many of them uh, because yeah. they they have different functions. You know, there are times where in some of the quick changes, the bodysuit is attached to the clothing to make things faster. But then there are times where I need to then on stage remove the clothes and keep the bodysuit on. So in that situation, it the bodysuit can't be attached to the clothing. So the uh, it, there are so many versions of that quick change. That's what's crazy is that the quick change. Uh, the the longest I have is about a minute and a half, right. and the fastest I do it is in 18 seconds. But they're different every time, and that's the thing that's really crazy. Is like one time it's you know face, bodysuit, clothes, wig, teeth, glasses, earrings, lipstick, shoes, go, and the next time it's you know suit, blouse, face, earrings. Like that's the thing that's crazy, and why my dressers are superheroes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, I can't even imagine. 18 seconds. Take that, Leslie Kretzer. 18 seconds. I know. I love her. I love you, though. <laughs> um, 18 seconds is crazy. It looks like the Indianapolis 500. It's like, <laughs> go. So, so right before the shutdown happened, I actually got to come visit you where you are in Philly. That's your, you're in Philly. That, that's I, where you, that's where I you had such a good time with you guys. Yeah. It was so much fun. It was so much fun to get to see your, uh, where you get your donuts. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, and I got to meet I got to meet Sadie, your yeah. daughter. I'm in her room. But say it again. I'm in her room. It's where oh, the room. Oh, that's her room. That's her room. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so you know, and it's so funny because she's how old now? Fifteen months. Right. So I know that like you got a little break from Beetlejuice, like mm -hmm. like and and you got to like spend time with her. But this is so this is kind of like a little bit of a blessing, you know, you know. In disguise, but you're actually getting to have some more amazing quality time. Yeah, I really do know that I will look back on this and yeah. be grateful for the time I had to watch her in this like super, super developmental time. Um, it sucks at, at what cost, um, but uh, but you know, it's we're all dealing with that, right? Aren't we? Like the idea of like 
making the most of the time you've been given and also not having to make the most of a global pandemic. You can also just be still um, mm -hmm. and, and juggling those two ideas so that one morning you can say like, the news has got me down and I'm going to sit still today and binge a new show. Um, or I'm going to write that thing I haven't been able to write, or I'm going to, you know, make, make some, make my expression to share online. Cause I have nowhere else to put it like balancing healthy perspective on both ends. Cause you need both right. To fuel, to fuel your soul through this thing. Yeah. It's a weird balance. Yeah. Do you, um, and I know that you, you have a lot of friends in the industry uh, and you know, we've all sort of, it's been very emotional. You know, you've seen a lot, you've seen some people very affected by yeah. what's happening with the coronavirus. Um, and, and people are just sort of on an emotional roller coaster, right? I mean, like, it's just kind of like one of these things where some days just doesn't, don't feel as good as other days. Are, are you experiencing that? And do you have any sort of advice for people going through that? Yeah. I mean, God, it, it is, it's a weird roller coaster where like, you know, one second you're seeing like a meme about washing your groceries that makes you laugh. Right. And then the next second, you know, you're swiping through your Instagram stories and you see what's going on with Nick Cordero. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's very real danger out there. And um, Nick, you know, for, for anyone watching, Nick Cordero is really going through it. And his amazing yeah. wife, Amanda, has been posting incredible content on her Instagram uh, in support of Nick. And in fact, every day at six o'clock, six o'clock Eastern Standard Time, three o'clock Pacific, um, they basically all around the world, people blast Nick Cordero's album, um, yeah. a song called Live Your Life. And they have been dancing and singing in an effort to wake Nick up. Nick has been sort of uh, out of it for for a while, and uh, but we're trying to wake him up. So at six o'clock, Live Your Life, the uh, Nick Cordero song, and um, tag his wife, Amanda. She'll appreciate the support. Um, yeah, it's things like that where you're like reminded of just how devastating this is. And, um, you know, all I can say is hold your loved ones tight, wash your damn hands and, uh, and stay six feet away from people. And then when the, when the curve is flattened, we'll figure out when the right time to go and, and be human again is. Yeah. What is, uh, and your beautiful wife Maggie is also home, of course. And what is what is Sadie into right now? What does she what does she like to do during her? You're spending a lot of time with her, so what does she? Yeah, she's um she's super into. Uh, we have this um, animal puppet. Uh, from, puppets, from, puppet. Yes, from the Muppets, uh -huh. and, and uh, she's super into um, like old school Sesame Street and the Muppet Show. Okay. Um, just today we were watching Gene Kelly sing, doing Singing in the Rain on the Muppet Show. Amazing. And uh, she, she uh, Easter Parade was on and we were flicking through the channels. And um, uh, when Fred Astaire does that unbelievable drum dance in the toy store, oh. um, she was to like into it. So she's, uh, she's into music for sure. Singing, lots of singing. You can always tell when the song is ending because she'll go, ma, na, ma, ma, na, ma, me, ma, na, ma. No. And then we have to clap. Like so you don't know what the song is, but you're sure when it's over. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, I'm gonna pop Caitlin back in and let's find out what the fans who are watching have to say. Hi fans. Hi. Hi. Well, first thing, what was your senior year high school musical? We gotta know now. It was Where's Charlie? Uh the old uh, Frank Lesser musical with one time with Amy. Yeah. All right, just needed to know. Is that actually the performance that got you your paper mill? Yeah. Yeah, I did my research. I know this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. He launched his career. I love you. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so the first question we're going to do is Nadia, the Corgi Queen okay. on YouTube, wants to know what memories of past shows have you been looking back on during quarantine the most? Have you been thinking of all of your past stuff? For sure. And it says love from Florida. Hi, Florida. Um, I love the Broward Center and a bunch of other Dr. Phillips Center, all the touring houses down there. I toured through with something rotten in Avenue Q. I love it down there. Um, but uh, I have, I've been like, you know, one of the things that I do when I'm in my stillness is go through and, and uh, look at old photos. And I was just looking at the Something Rotten tour the other day and I had such amazing adventures on that tour. Yeah. And you gave me the opportunity to do that 18 episode vlog for you guys called Bottom Up, um, which if anybody hasn't watched it, if you want to see what touring is like, it was a really, really fun sort of video, video journal of that ride. 
Um, but yeah, I look, I've been looking back a lot and just sort of celebrating the crazy families that I've built. Isn't it? It's wild how 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 many families you make uh, in a in a life doing this because you really do. You fall in love with every group of people that you work with, and then you keep many of them as you move on to the next one. And then you look back and you have these this gigantic family. I love it. Yeah. Love that. Um, Marco on YouTube says, since Mrs. Doubtfire is playing at the Sondheim Theater, is there a Sondheim role that you're dying to play? Oh, man. <sighs> Listen, it's going to take it's going to take 20 years before anybody will ever buy me as it. But I mean, Sweeney Todd is my favorite show of all time. Uh, and I, I, while I might not seem scary, I know it's in there. Um, I actually was thinking of doing, so at, at Broadway Con, the first Broadway Con, which people were calling Blizzard Con, uh, I, on like a dare from a fan, did Pretty Women, mm -hmm. but I did both parts. I did like a one man, just out of my head, because I know every syllable of that show. And people started joking with me, like, you have to do a one man Sweeney Todd, you have to do one. And my brain actually started spinning about whether or not that's possible, because I'm not really right for anyone in Sweeney Todd. <laughs> so, so maybe I can play everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but I, I, I have found some conventions that might actually make that happen. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Maybe down the line we'll do something crazy. I, I'm really down with this idea. I'm, I like it a lot. I love that. So Jenna M on YouTube says, being able to see Mrs. Doubtfire's face was the last big thing we got to see. Oh. So what was that moment like for you having that out in the world? And what is your favorite moment of the audience's reaction? Every oh. um, yeah, it was a wild thing, you, you know, building this disguise. And um, it took a long time. It took, you know, we, we went through four or five iterations of what the facial prosthetics would be. And uh, it was brilliant on behalf of the show because they kept on building this insane suspense. Um, and people were like, show the face, show the face. What they didn't know is that simultaneously we were trying to figure out the face. So it was strategic, but it was also necessary because we, by the time the world saw it, we wanted it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we went through many, many versions and it had to be function functional so that it was seamless in an 18 second quick change. Unlike, and that's what's so exciting about the show is that in the movie, every time Robin Williams runs in the other room and comes back 18 seconds later as Mrs. Doubtfire, we know that someone yelled cut and they had five and a half hours in a trailer. When, when I've got 18 seconds, I've got 18 seconds. So th this thing needed to really work. And um, the first night that Mrs. Doubtfire steps through the front door of the Hillard home and says, you know, you for deny a doubt fire, dear. It was like an eruption. The 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 release of the audience in anticipation of seeing that character again. Um, it's an amazing feeling because it's all of this, all of this excitement for the our show and the work being done on stage, and all of this third party affection for the character itself and the legacy of that movie, all mm -hmm. being thrown at me at once. And it's such a privilege to get to be on the receiving end of that. It's so exciting. And um, yeah, when that when the pictures finally dropped online, it was like uh, it was so exciting to see people and uh, being so excited about it and seeing what my version of that character is going to be because we wanted it to be my face transformed into an elderly Scottish woman, not yeah. my face transformed into Robin Williams face as an elderly Scottish woman. And I think they really succeeded at that. Absolutely. Definitely. Oh, I just love. Oh, here we go. So Ryan Leibowitz wants to know, many people look up to you, including myself. Who are some people that you look up to in the musical theater world? Oh, thank you for that sweet question. Right now, uh, well, for a long time, but especially right now, Danny Burstein. I, I have, I've, I always say I want to be Danny Burstein when I grow up because he stylistically can do anything. He can do, you know, Adolfo yeah. in, uh, in Drowsy, and he can do Tevia, and I always buy it. I always buy every word. Uh, he just doesn't have an inauthentic bone in his body, uh, and he just kicked COVID-19's ass. So he's my hero. Uh, when by, I was the way, by the way, uh, happy birthday, Rebecca Luker. Today Yay! Danny posted a photo of them today. Full circle. I, I worked with Rebecca Luker when I did Where's Charlie again at Encores. Oh, okay, right, okay. 
Awesome. Yeah. Danny Burstein is a good role model for anyone. Truly. Just life. Just in life. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, so Noelle on YouTube wants to know, how ha did Chaplin change your life? Well, uh, from Belgium. Oh, sorry, I love Chaplin. I can't talk about Chaplin. I love this. Song. In, in, in so many ways. Wait, there's my little Chaplin tattoo. Oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> that show changed my life in so many ways. I mean, first of all, just career wise, you know, getting to play a role like that and what a Tony nomination does for the momentum of you get being able to work more. Um, so in a way it, it sort of, uh, you know, it lights a fire under your career, which is really exciting, but, but one that you have to continue to work on. It's not like you then get a free pass for the rest of your life. You have to continue to grind. Um, but it's a wonderful thing. Um, and, and in terms of playing the guy, he was so messy and complicated and, and a really, uh, flawed guy, uh, who birthed such human comedy out of, his struggles and his problems and his addictions and his, uh, it was really crazy. And, um, you know, the, the very human struggles that were underneath his comedy changed the way I do comedy now. You know what I mean? It, it, it was always very clear that underneath the laughs, there was a guy who was really going through something. Yeah. So when I'm doing a show like Mrs. Doubtfire, it is so helpful to have trained in Charlie Chaplin, <laughs> because it is all about what's going on for the guy underneath the disguise. And, and Chaplin, the hat, the cane, and the mustache was a disguise. The little tramp character was disguising a homeless nobody just trying to be taken seriously. And in Mrs. Doubtfire's case, it's just a guy desperate to spend time with his kids. And the, the struggle bubbling underneath the comedy makes the comedy richer. I'm so grateful um, for that time because I think it made me a better actor. You told me previously, though, that Chaplin also told the whole community that, like, you're the guy that could, like, I forget what you said, juggle chainsaws or, like, <laughs> yes, yes. You, you could do anything because yes. like, Chaplin was the show where people were like, yeah, I, I think what I said was like, yeah, we need someone to walk a tightrope on fire juggling chainsaws. Yeah, call him. He'll do it. Um, <laughs> but but the, thing, the thing is about Chaplin, too, like, when he was, when he got an idea to do something in a movie, he didn't already know how to do it. Oh. That, that was the miraculous thing. The, the only difference for him between can and can't was time and work. That was it. Yeah. So like when, when somebody says, can you do this? I say, how long have I got? Because uh, if I take Chaplin's ethic, yeah, I can do it. I just need enough time and to work hard enough. And I think uh, that's, that's an attitude that is really um, valuable to a director or a choreographer uh, looking to do something you know, extraordinary. Could you do Chaplin again? If I had $20 million and I'll give 10 of it to you, 10 million to you, 10 million <laughs> to the show, could you do it again? I would love to. Okay, good. I, 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 how long would you give me? <laughs> <laughs> how much time do you need? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, spoiler, I don't have $20 million. <laughs> All right, we have one last question, and it's actually the question that most people are asking. So I'm gonna, especially Taylor Duda on YouTube. How is Adam 3.0 doing? Oh, Adam 3.0 was Adam Maitland's puppet counterpoint that an amazing fan named David um, built for me and gave to me at the stage door. It was sort of a Muppet style puppet of of Adam. And we ended up making like an entire web series about Adam secretly wanting the role and like hitting on Gary Butler and it ended in an epic battle. Um, he's doing well. He is alive, question mark, according to the end of our series. Um, and uh, and still very much has it out for uh, David Josephsburg. So look out, David. Um, but he's doing great. And uh I had I I miss the Beetlejuice fans. They were some of the best fans. They are so passionate. And um, I cannot tell you how many people come up to me on the street in Times Square back when there were people in Times Square. Yeah. And they would come up to me and say, Rob, Rob McClure. And I would turn around and they just go, why do you polish your crib when you don't have a kid? And even if you did have a kid, this crib is too precious for placing a baby inside it. So it simply exists to remind you your sense of perfection. It's just a reflection that you are not mentally prepared to make room for a kid. And I go, great. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I might follow you around for your entire career. Let me bring okay. you back in, say goodbye. 
Uh, I, I got to take my jaw off the floor after that one. Yeah, that was amazing. Still, still up there. Still got it. <laughs> Rob McClure, we all adore you. I love you, friends. I hope you have a great weekend with the family, and we hope to see you back on the Broadway soon. We're all dying to see Mrs. Doubtfire. Curtains will rise again, and it's going to be so electric when they do. Absolutely. Thank Love you so much for being here. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell us who's, who's, who's on top for Monday? Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in for another week of Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. You guys can get us wherever you listen to your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Have a great weekend. Stay inside. Only go out if you need to. Stay six feet apart from everybody. And be sure to tune in next time. We talk to Mr. James Snyder of Harry Potter and the Curse.